Today we're going to make a puffin picture. Now puffins are definitely my favourite birds and I was lucky enough to go to the Farne Islands and see them and walk amongst them and they're really comical funny little birds. And I will also be using a new technique and this is using pre-felt. Now this is a merino pre-felt so it's made from merino wool and it's very very soft and it's all natural so it sticks to the wool that I use in my pictures. It's a little bit different to the felt that you're not getting in your normal haberdashery shop. So this is a merino pre-felt. I'm just using scraps in the colours of a puffin. Now, to make these little puffins, if you can see them there, I've cut out the merino felt. And then after it's been wet felted, I've added needle felted detail. So the picture is laid out as dry wool and then the pre-felt is put on top of it and then when you wet felt it this pre-felt actually sticks to the picture beautifully. Now you can see on that one see all the detail there that I put into his little beak and the background so we've got merino wool in the background we've got mulberry silk here in the sky if you've looked at my previous videos you'll see how I use these effect fibres we've got sari silk there and the sparkle, that comes from a Stellina and Merino mix. The rocks, they're made from curly wool. And I've just added a little bit of mulberry silk to show the waves on the rocks. And look over here, there's a whole mismatch of different effect fibres and colours which represents the vegetation and flowers that are there. So I've tried to put lots of um, light into the picture. And you can see the islands in the background and we've got the horizon there. So I'll show you what we're going to do to create the puffin. Our picture is just going to have a single puffin. It's going to be uh, quite a large one in the picture. So what I did is I went online and I found a picture of a puffin that I liked. So there he is. And then I found a matching template. You can see I've already cut the template out of this one. So that pretty much matches this one, so that when I do the needle felting, I'll be able to use this design to help me with the colours, etc. So here, I've cut out all the pieces as a template. So here we are, look. Lots of little bits here. And then I pinned them to the pre-felt and created a little puffin. So... Here he is, let's put the little face on, if it goes all that way I think, and the beak, and a couple of little legs and flippers, there we are. So that's just the basic outline of the, the puffin, so that when we wet felt it, that's when we're going to put the detail on with the needle felting and you can move things around a little bit with the needle as well. So there we go. This is what we're going to create. We're going to start off with an oyster coloured background. So I'll go and get all the things that we need and I'll be back to you in a moment or two. Right, hopefully I've got everything I need now. I've got my picture to use as inspiration. I've got some oyster coloured merino for the base. I've got a selection of other merinos in different colours um, for the colours and just there if you can see it that's the merino mixed with the Stellina fibre for sparkle. Over here I've got my curly locks and in this tub all the silks that I might need. Um, Angelina fibre, carders just in case I need them. And in this box, I've got lots of little neps, which are going to be the flowers. And hidden under here, some scissors, some embroidery scissors. So hopefully we'll be able to go and not stop um, from start to finish. Right, I'm going to try and work quite fast today. So if I am going too fast for you and you're quite new to felting, just have a quick look at my previous videos on wet felting and effect fibres 
and there's a couple there, one on seascapes and one on uh, cornfields, which I go a lot, lot slower and it'll show you how to lay out the base, etc. But I'm just going to start working and hopefully you'll be able to follow along with me. So I'm going to lay out the base quite finely. Overlapping. I normally do this standing up because I find it a lot easier. But for the video, I'm just doing it sitting down. It's quite fine, this merino. Remember at the end, I just tip it over so we get a nice straight edge. Just pulling off little bits. There we are, that's the, the base done. So I'm doing it on some bubble wrap with the bubbles of side up. And then I'm going with the second layer of this oyster coloured merino. There we are. Quite a fine, thin layer to use as our base. And again, I'm going to tip up that last layer just to get the straight edge. Now oh, that was very quick. That's the base all sorted. Yeah, I've got a little bit sticking to me, but it's absolutely fine. So I'm going to start at the very top of the picture with some blues. I'm going to start, let's see which blues we've got. This is a nice one. I think this is a denim blue. So I'm not using my carders for the sky today. I'm just going to add some bits like this because it's not a huge picture. But I don't know if you can see, but I am standing up now because I like to see from above when I'm working. There I am. So I'm following my picture. I'm going to use a little bit of this one. So I'm trying to get the sky to sweep across. Just pulling out little bits as I go. Let's put a little bit of um, white into it. This is a lightning white. To the sky like that. So I'm putting white here so I can differentiate between the sky and the land, so I've got a nice horizon, or the sea rather. Whereas so it's coming from slightly darker down to the white. There we are. I haven't used much in the way of colours there. Let's see what else we've got. got a little bit of cornflower blue here, which is nice. I like the colour of the cornflower in the skies. So we're putting a little bit over there as well. And to see if I can find some dream blue. Dream, where was it? It's a little bit here. Yeah, just to lighten it up slightly. But before I go any further, I'm going to start putting my effect fibres on. So I've got some blue sari silk here. Remember those lovely fibres that are in there. I'm just going to tease some out and lay it across the sky like that. Hope you can see all right. And I've just got a little bit of blue mulberry silk, which will look nice in the sky. Don't need much. And my trademark, which is the vapour trail with the white mulberry silk. There we are, so that's going to go down the sky like that. Lovely. And then I'm going to go for a midnight blue. And this is going to be my horizon. So I'm just drawing a little bit out. I started to felt a bit this wool. It's, not, it's been around a while. And I'm just going to twist it so that my horizon is quite obvious. 
There we go, I've just twisted that and I'm going to put it on there like that. And then later on, I'll be able to add some little mounds, which will be the islands. So I'm going to go for this colour again. And start adding the sea. I always think that turquoise is a really nice in sea. So you can see already we've got that definite divide between the sea and the sky. It doesn't take long to start building up a picture. I've tried working in watercolours and it took me weeks to do one picture. But I find working with wool is so much more forgiving. So just by laying it out in that direction as well, that looks as though we've got the waves. And I'm going to add some other blue colours. So this is a really nice turquoise. I'm adding a little bit of that. And twist it again as well just to give it a bit more ink from the middle there we go a bit more get a bit of movement there look um all the time i'm looking at my other picture that i used um what should we go for use a little bit of the dream blue again as well I'm just going to build it a bit lower as well so that we can put some islands and some land into it. Very quickly, quite fine as well. The, the sky and the sea pretty much done so as you can see I've added some different colours of blue I've got some mulberry silk in here blue mulberry silk and some white stellina and um, merino mix a little bit of sari silk in the sky there and the two lots of mulberry silk um, that'll do for that and now I'm going to start working on the land so the background I'm going to use um, this nice lichen colour. I'm going to bring it down. There we go, just along the bottom. So that's the start of our land. I use this lichen a lot because it's um, very natural rather than using anything too bright. And I'm going to try and bring in some little hills coming down. And the puffin is going to um, sort of sit here looking out this way. So just laying out an idea of where the land's going to be. That's why I brought the sea right down to the bottom so that the sea can come up to the land and we don't have a gap. There's going to be so much over the top of this as well. Right, I'm just going to continue building up the layers and then we'll have a look in a few minutes what I've actually done.
Now you can see I've quickly laid out a background. So I've used a variety of different merino wools. I've got some more mulberry silk in there. A little bit of curly brown wool to represent the rocks. Some sari silk here. And now I'm going to put on my puffin so that I can um, put the flowers and things around him and I'll know where he's going to be positioned. So that's the base, just really, really quickly laid out. And now I'm going to put on the puffin and um, can add all sorts of detail. So put it round here, just out of harm's way. So I'd like my little puffin to be standing on the rocks. So he's going to go about here. So he's going to be quite a big puffin. There he is, just surveying the scene in front of him. I'm going to put up a big. I'm quite happy with that because I think the, the puffin is in quite good proportion. So, as with the other pictures I had, there were some nice rocks in the sea. So I've just got a little bit of the curly wool, and I'm going to turn it that way, I think, because that's going to be a little rock. I'll give it another rock out there as well. I did cut the curly wool so it keeps the curls, just find a bit that I like. Hmm. There we go, that'll do. That's going to be another little rock out in the sea. Um, probably over here, I think. Do you remember I put some mulberry silk underneath the rocks? I'm just going to mush it up a little bit. Draw a bit off. And that will represent some waves. Hopefully it'll work. If it doesn't, we'll take it off. It's very forgiving. Just a bit more there. So there's some rocks in the distance. This is meant to be a bit of sand in us here. And I'm going to add some nets to that. So just a few little nets there. I think I've got some brown ones as well. There we go, very really nice. brown nips just little bits and pieces that are on the beach here and got all these beautiful uh, curly walls here so I'm going to use some of these to represent the foliage so as you know, I don't often cut the wool, but I can cut these. So that could be anything cut, but I just like the colour of it. Look at those colours. Just adds a little bit of texture and interest to your work. So we've got a bit of height here. Just there we are. And I think I'll put some round the other side of the picture too. You can see it, okay. Now these came from Hawes um, in North Yorkshire. Uh, they've got lots of lovely sort of Wednesday tail type sheep. I just love the colours. So 
I do have a fleece at home which somebody gave me which I'm going to have to have a go at dyeing but that's a new thing for me right so that's the um the pink that I put in and look at these lovely greens as well aren't they beautiful they could be grasses or if you were doing something quite nautical it could almost be like seaweed couldn't it so I think they they're going to stick really nicely because they're pure wool I'm just going to layer those on top Like that. Oh dear. Doesn't matter. Far too messy. Just over here as well. Just over the puffin a little bit as well. And I think that will do for all. Oh, I've got one here that's looking like a minky sort of brown. I like that. I'm just going to put a few down here amongst the rocks. Quite short ones. There we are. Just framing the puffin quite nicely. Like that. So that's the curly wool we'll put to, to one side. Right, I've got some sari silk here. And I'm going to go for some lovely sort of bright pinks and yellows. So there's the sari silk. And I've got this uh, mag magenta, I think, wool. A bit of purple. And got some yellow mulberry silk. And some yellow merino. And I think that'll do. We've got a whole mixture there. So we've got the sour. Oh, I might just put a little bit of these curls in as well. It's got some other curls. Yeah, some pinks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them very much like confetti. I don't know if you can see here. So cut the end off. I'm going to cut those. into tiny little random pieces and these are going to be scattered like flowers but there we are can you see all the, the random bits that i've got the sari silk and the mulberry silks i'm just going to scatter those onto my picture and that gives you that mismatch that we saw of all the different colors Now, when I use the white um, naps, they look really pretty because they look like the little bits of white that you do get amongst um, seaside flowers and plants. I'm going to put a few little white naps on. And some down here. Just using lots of different effect fibres to build up this landscape. There we are. And I've got a few like mulberry coloured ones here. Got some green. And they're going to go along the very bottom where we haven't got so many flowers. Just there, like that. So really he's sort of sitting a bit on a, a cliff top, isn't he? And he's just looking at what's going on. Now if you'll bear with me, I'm going to get my um, pre-felt again and we're going to actually cut some flowers out. Right, we're starting to build up quite a nice picture here. And I've just remembered this lovely sari silk that I've got, which is sort of stone coloured. I'm just going to put that there where the sand is just to highlight that change in colour. So there it is. Right, the little flowers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the petals out 
from this white um, merino pre-felt. There are a few flowers in the foreground just to give it a sense of perspective. And we're almost there. I'll just rectify this bit that I moved before because it'll never look right. I might just take that bit off and have another go at that bit. There, that's better. Okay, and then I'm just going to get a little bit of the sparkling Angelina fibre. Got some gold here take a little bit and using my embroidery scissors I'm just going to snip some colour and sparkle into my foreground I do like a bit of shine there we go that's nice and because I want a few little waves in the sea, I've got some more curly locks, some white ones here. So I'm just going to snip off a few bits that I like. So there we are. I'm going to put those a bit out at sea. There we are. And another one. So I don't know who this little puffin is waiting for. It looks like he's waiting for somebody. That one over there, I think. So that's the background done. So we've got all this floral work in the foreground. We've got the sparkling horizon there. Oh, we need some um, islands, don't we? Good job I remembered. So it's got some, um, oh, this is the midnight blue again. Here we are, look. I'm just going to construct a couple of little islands to put on that horizon. It's always good to have a look and see if you can add anything. So there we are. I'm just going to twist it again, add it there. So that's one little island. It's a nice little archipelago. And I'm going to put another one, a smaller humpy one here, I think. And I'm just moulding it into shape, a bit like plasticine. There we are. I'm not putting any boats or anything like that on, because I don't want to detract from the puffin. There we are. And that horizon, I'll be able to needle felt and, and play around with a little bit afterwards. So there's that. It's all ready for wet felting now. So after I've wet felted it, we'll come back and we'll do some needle felting. Remember, if you want to know how to wet felt, have a look at my tutorial and that will show you.
but what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the picture and feeling it, feeling the felt. And the felt feels as though it's far more sturdy now. I'm looking at the back, just running my finger over, and those fibres have stopped moving around. So that tells me that the felt is ready. But I can also see that where there was more wool, that spread out more. So what we can do is we can just pull the top out like that and just square it off a little bit. So it's there we go, We're giving quite a lot of pulling there, and that's squared it off more now. You can even pull it out more. We'll do a bit more when it's dry. And you can see there are little gaps there, but we'll fill those in with the felting needle. The islands did move. But I, I put them back and carried on felting. So I'm going to take this away now and I'm going to um, rinse it, dry it with a hairdryer, and then come back ready for felting, uh, needle felting. Right, I've finished wet felting the little puffin picture and it's completely dry now. But looking at the puffin, I can see that it's really moved around during the wet felting process. If you look at the two examples together, there's quite a lot of work needs doing to make this little puffin look like this one. And what I'm going to use is this needle, and it's a number 38 needle, which is a, quite a multi-purpose felting needle. I don't know whether you can see there are two little um, ridges here. So anything that's on the top surface of the felt, when it's pressed down, it will stick. So just to show you. Got a little bit of orange here. If I just put it in the sky there and I press the needle into the orange, it will stick the wool to the wool underneath. But the good thing about this is that you can also take it off again. So there we are. And then a little rub and that gets rid of the holes. So the problem I can see here straight away is that the black and the white are out of proportion with each other. So I'm just going to start manipulating with the needle and with pulling because if you pull too much with a needle, the needle will break. So I'm just going to pull some of this white out here. There we are. So that's come out quite nicely. And I'm just going to needle felt it into place. Underneath I've got a, a needle felting pad. And I can see that there's not enough white here. So it's quite easy just to add a little bit more. So I've got some more white merino and I'm just going to add a little bit more to the top here. I think that's the body of the puffin done quite well now. Have you noticed 
I've had to add little bits and I've also had to push bits in as well by just felting sideways with it. And then where I've felted quite hard, I'm just going to rub it in together and that will just help blend the wool a little bit as well. So now to put some detail on the feet, on the little flippers, and the most important bit, the puffin's beak. This should make a huge difference. Shall I just put a little bit of black on first? There we are, I've finished working on my little puffin and I'm so much happier with him now. I've added a little bit more white to his head here and widened the back of the head a little bit with some black and then here I've given a little bit more fluff at the top of his leg. So looking at the, the pictures I've been following is far more realistic and I'm quite happy with the foreground with all these flowers. Um, I hope you've enjoyed working on your puffin. And you can use these techniques to create pictures of any animal that you like. Um, kingfishers are always very popular, or it could be a little penguin. Um, I'd love to see what you make using these techniques. And thank you for watching.